Well folks, today we're going to demonstrate the most common and simple types of air hose repair. And I don't know about you, but I think this one needs a bit of repair. <laughs> in addition to repairing the hose end, I've got a hole in the hose about 20 foot into the reel. And that's because I managed somehow to shoot a nail through it with my air nailer. <laughs> and we're going to splice that, so let's get to it. So this is what we're going to use today to do our repairs with. Now, these are available at, you know, auto parts stores, hardware stores, big box lumber yards, on and on. They're very, they're very available. And I purchased this one at Harbor Freight for less than two bucks. Uh, although some places they charge a lot more. Now inside, and I've already pre-opened this, catch it, there's three hose clamps. Now to go with this, this is a splice, and this is used to repair a hole or, or damage in the running length of the air hose. Now if your hose end is damaged, that's what this piece is for, and it only requires one clamp. Now this piece also comes with a female end if you need that, but you usually have to purchase that separately. So here's my hose end, <laughs> and as you can see, this is really ratted out. I've totally dry rotted here uh, and fabric is showing inside the hose. Now there's no way this will hold air. I had tried to wrap it with tape to temporarily get by, but that just didn't work. So we're going to end up cutting this back and installing this piece here on the end. Also one thing to think about, if you've got lots and lots of dry rot here on the end, you want to be sure to cut back to good hose even if you have to go back a foot or two. And if your whole hose is uh, dry rotted, you may ought to think about replacing it. Now, this is the stop for the hose reel. And if this is in the way, this can be disconnected and slid further down the air hose and reconnected. And you may lose a foot or two of air hose, but that's better than losing the whole hose. For this step, you can use a Stanley or a snap-off knife, shears, or I'm just gonna use my shop scissors just try to make a square clean cut before you try to slip in your fitting be sure to slip your clamp on first now slip the narrow end of your fitting into the hose and it should slip right in into rubber hose like this now i'm using a nut driver here to get started then i'll follow up with a wrench and get it good and tight and this particular fitting calls for a six millimeter yours may differ this is 3 8 inch rubber reinforced hose, but many hoses are plastic. And 1 half, 3 8 and 1 quarter inch are the most common sizes, and this size refers to the hose's inside diameter. It should be written on the side of your hose, or you can always measure the ID across the end of the hose. I'm going to wrap the end of the fitting with some Teflon tape. And this will help seal it a little bit better, but it also makes it easier to take the quick connect on and off. Then we're going to tighten the quick connect with some pliers and an adjustable wrench to make sure it's good and secure. So now we can turn on the air compressor. And it's going to be too loud at first, but when it turns off, we'll listen and feel and see if we have any air leaks. And fortunately, we don't. Pretty good repair. So now let's try to repair my nail hole, which as mentioned earlier, is about 20 foot into the hose reel. And the splice will definitely cause a raised bump area in the line. So you may be wondering if it will retract properly into the reel. So first let's repair it and we'll see how that works. Okay. I used a white wax pencil to mark the hole. And I'm touching that up because it's almost worn off and I have to mark both sides of the hose. And as you can see, it's clear that the nail traveled diagonally and because of this, I'm going to need to cut out an inch or maybe better uh, to make sure I get both leaks. Now slip on your clamp and insert the fitting into the hose. And of course, you'll slip the other clamp on before you attach the hose in. These fittings have barbed hose ends and even before you tighten the clamps, you can see how much holding power they have. It takes some real effort to separate them. Now I'm tightening the clamps, uh, first with the six millimeter nut driver, and then I'll follow up with the six millimeter wrench. 
Now when I've got them snugged up, I'm going to position them both on the same size of the hose. This gives the splice a bit smaller footprint, which is good since it has to travel into the reel. If you don't have a reel, this is not important. After testing for leaks, I'm going to wrap the joint with several layers of electrician's tape. Now if we don't wrap it with the tape or some other material, the hard edges on the clamps will constantly rub against the rubber hose when it's contracted and retracted, and that will lead to hose failure. Now we're ready to retract it, and look, it works like a charm, doesn't it? The splice clears the entrance hole, and it doesn't cost the reel to jam or anything. So now that we've made our hose repaired, I want to try it out. So first I got my nail gun out and I did a little project here and it worked fine of course. So then I took the hose outside and aired up my truck tires and this, of course this took a lot longer than the nail project but everything worked just fine and it held air just fine and I think we've got a good fix. So I hope this was helpful. If so please be sure to go below and like my video and we've got more great DIY projects coming. So be sure to subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell. And until next time, thanks for watching.